Hey, what is up, guys? It's your boy Michelangelo here bringing you another video. So, happy Sunday and happy Mother's Day as well. Hope you guys wished your moms happy Mother's Day and showed them how much you appreciate them and love them. I did the same. Uh, and now here we are for probably my favorite day of the week, to be honest with you. Every Sunday, you guys know the vibes. Katana Kaji no Sato Hen, aka Demon Slayer Season 3, The Swordsmith Village Arc. Cannot wait to jump into this episode 6 here today. I can't be the only one who rewatched that previous episode multiple times, especially the section with Tanjiro packing up Urogi, Karaku, and Sekido with the Hinokami Kagura! Nichiun no Ryu! Kaburi Mai! Shout out to Aiko-sensei for teaching me how to pronounce, uh, you know, the, you know, technique in Japanese. Japanese. I really appreciate you for that, Aiko Sensei. So, Sun Halo Dragon head dance. Goddamn, bro. Animation was god tier in that scene, man. I can't believe it. Urogi, Karaku, and, Se well, Sekido, you know, he felt it coming, you know, because he was, you know, he was feeling Yorichi in uh, Tanjiro at that moment before he was about to attack, you know, and uh, I really, really hope to see Yorichi and Muzan's backstory at some point because, man, if Yorichi was such a badass, like, how the hell did Muzan survive, you know? And the fact that Muzan survived shows how much of a badass Muzan is too, you know? So when we get to Muzan, bro, I really honestly don't know how we're gonna survive, to be honest with you. But man, that scene was absolutely amazing. I'm gonna get to, uh, you know, uh, my thoughts on it as we keep going here. But uh, I took some notes down here on my phone so I don't forget, um, just to recap the things that we learned from the previous episode. So it started off with Muichiro, uh, you know, going with Kotetsu to save Kanamori, so they managed to do that. Uh, Muichiro saved him from the Finding Nemo, and then uh, he learned uh, that uh, Kanamori had finished forging their, uh, his sword, Muichiro's sword, so they're on their way to get it. And then, um, in the process, Muichiro was able to sense that there was a demon in the area, of course, being Gyoko, and then their confrontation began. So, uh, in the process, Muichiro was caught in a very uh, difficult bind because he had to save uh, Kotetsu and Kanamori from one of Gyoko's uh, techniques, the Thousand Needle Fish kill, which, uh, you know, pinned Muichiro. He freaking looked like Sonic the Hedgehog, man. You hate to see it. Plus, the needles have poison in them, which is absolutely a downer. Uh, so, yeah, in the process, Muichiro is getting very upset because also Gyoko, um, you know, he seems to be a very, very you know, disgusting scumbag because he killed so many people in the swordsmith village and, uh, you know, used their bodies to create art, you know, so many swordsmiths and everything and Kotetsu and Kanamori were feeling so bad seeing all those, you know, people who are still alive and uh, Gyoko used their bodies to create some sort of messed up art and uh, he was torturing them, he, you know, uh, twisted a sword that uh, was, uh, you know, pinned in one of them and uh, I was just so messed up, you know, Muichiro got so upset, he attacked him and everything. Uh, then in the process of their battle, uh, you know, Gyoko imprisoned uh, Muichiro with his Kekijutsu Suigoku Bachi, which is a water prison pot. Thank you again, Aiko-sensei, for teaching me how to pronounce the blood demon art of Gyoko. So currently, Muichiro is trapped in that water prison pot. Uh, he can't breathe, and of course, as you know, a demon slayer's most, uh, you know, important technique is their breathing techniques, right? So he can't uh, breathe, so he's currently trapped. He can't cut through the water and everything, so we left off on Muichiro, uh, you know, handling, uh, or basically in that bind. We finally move on to Mitsu who was on her way to the swordsmith village she managed to save uh you know the residents from the finding nemos that were attacking them uh and uh she pro uh, proceeded as well to save the chief um you know her sword is absolutely fantastic it's like a whip man and uh we got to see her uh do her love breathing aka koi no kokyu ichi no kata hatsu koi no wananaki which is uh you know shivers of first love thank you again aiko sensei for teaching me how to say it in japanese uh so yeah uh, mitsuri was able to save the chief and uh i don't know you know where she's gonna head now is she gonna go help Tanjiro, she's gonna help, uh, go help um, um, Muichiro, like, you know, I don't know, you know, I guess we're gonna find out in this episode. Then we move on to Tanjiro, who was, of course, in the process of battling, uh, you know, Sekido, Urogi, and uh, Karaku, um, and Nezuko was able to grab his sword and uh, turn it into a bright red one with her blood demon art, of course, explosive, uh, exploding uh, blood, right? So, um, during that process, Tanjiro was having another, uh, you know, inherited memory and he saw Sumiyoshi's memories and uh, Sumiyoshi was talking to his wife and how she was admiring uh, Yorichi and how, you know, she was talking about how swordsmen, uh, their blades turn bright red uh, in the process of battle. Thank you guys so much for letting me know and correcting me as well that uh, Yorichi's blade was exactly like Tanjiro's. It was black, but then in battle, he could turn it to be red, bright red. Now, Tanjiro's method is different because he used Nezuko's blood, um, you know, her exploding blood to turn it into a bright red sword, but how exactly exactly did Yorichi do it? You know, that's that's kind of up in the air. We don't know how exactly he did it. Like, I, I still don't understand how, you know? So that was, um, you know, that <laughs> still a question mark on that. But uh, yeah, of course, Tanjiro popped off. He did his Hinokami Kagura Nichiri no Ryu 
Kaburi Mai, Sun Halo Dragon, Head Dance, he packed up Urogi, Karaku, and Sekido. And then in the process, uh, he was talking about how he felt during that moment when he fought Yutaro and how his mark changed, changed again. And now he's, uh, you know, learned practically how to do it, you know, uh, more uh, freely now. But I still don't understand what exactly this mark is. I really hope, you know, we get an explanation on that, you know, um, and everything. So in the process, he was worried about Aizetsu, you know, surprise, surprise, Genya had packed him up. But, uh, you know, there was another surprise that, uh, you know, shocked the heck out of me. Genya is a demon. He, I, I don't, I don't understand how he turned into a demon, but I, I hope we get that answer in this particular episode. Because we left off on Tanjiro, extremely shocked to see him like that. So I don't know if Genya is going to attack us now or what's going to happen. But yeah, so uh, he has yellow tips. Like, I, his demon design is pretty interesting. You know, I love the yellow tips on his hair and everything. And he looks monstrous. And his eyes, you know, his eyes are black. And I think his pupils are yellow, if I'm not mistaken, right? So yeah, man, um, we've seen Genya in the daytime, right? Even during final selection. Like, even back when he had, a, like, a smaller body, you know, because he, bul he bulked up, like, later on in Season 1 when Tanjiro saw him in the battle in the butterfly mansion but he's he's been in the sunlight so at what point did he turn into a demon and is he just like nezuko and and somebody brought up a very interesting question maybe he could be like blade you know <laughs> the vampire the daywalker is he a daywalker like can he be in the sun and the the you know the sun and uh you know and and the basically can he be in the day and night at the same time you know like is he kind of what how i have so many questions regarding genya you know so i really hope to find out all that information in this particular episode but uh yeah that's practically all i wanted to say uh from the analyzation i did in the previous episode um yeah man i can't wait to see how things are gonna play out in this particular episode last one was absolutely fantastic my apologies for the lengthy recap but i just wanted to give you guys my thoughts on all that but anyway guys that's the recap cannot wait to jump in and see what we have in store here for this particular episode so i've spoken enough without any further ado let's jump right in Three, two, one, go. Episode six, aren't you going to become a Hashira, okay? Ooh, I love the scar on the title. Is that Genya's scar? Bro, is he gonna attack Tanjiro? I really hope not. Does he have his senses? Genya, you good? Karaku! The pain is scorching. Wow. So this is just like how when Tanjiro did his Hinokami Kagura Shakotsueno uh, or burning, burning Bone Summer Sun against Daki, she also had uh, the similar you know, questions regarding why can she regenerate and what is this burning pain. They're feeling the same way. I guess that's the effect of sun breathing for you, Hinokami Kagura. Wow. So we can't finish all three of them, just like, or four of them rather, just like the way they did with Yutaro and Daki. It's pointless? So then how do we beat them? They're still alive! Damn, Nezuko's still under the rubble. Bro, Tanjiro's sword is still a little bit red, wow. Oh, Nezuko. Oh, she came in clutch for Tanjiro, bro. What's been bothering you? That scent he had in the previous episode. The tongue then? A fifth demon? Wait, what? A fifth one? So, Hantengu? Or somebody else? Hantengu? Oh! Bro, Genya! Wow, is he jealous about that? I mean, we had Tengen and Zenitsu and Inosuke. Yeah, you're choking me, bro. Bro! Aww. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh my god, bro. We got a demon choking us and 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 uh, I swear Tanjiro is so awesome, man. Like he's supporting Genya despite his look, man. Tanjiro, you got a demon choking you out and you want to support his dreams? Only Tanjiro would. <laughs> wow, but how did he become a demon? <laughs> what? Huh? What? Sekido! Damn! Yo, he dodged the lightning there. Sekido's back. Damn. So the fifth demon on Tengu was somebody else. Damn, they're back, bro. America breathing. Let's go, Genya. Oh, look at Nezuko. Stop. I'm here to help. Haha, <laughs> Nezuko. Woo! America breathing. Let's go. Is it on Tengu? Bro, and his sword is still red. I love that. The music is so good. Woo! Damn! Karaku's fan is so annoying. So now he can smell. Thanks to Karaku clearing the air. The bushes? Antengu! So it is Antengu! But I thought he... I thought he died. I thought like once you cut their heads off and they split into others, like Hantengu disappears. The thought never occurred to me that maybe that Hantengu would still be around, but I guess he is, so I guess it is Hantengu. No wonder they didn't die. So he's been hiding in the bushes this whole time when Sekido and the crew have been hand handling things? Wow. Damn. N Northeast. They're protecting Hantengu. Bro, that lightning is so annoying. We need to get rid of Sekido. Damn! Okay. Let's go with a fantastic kick there. And then we got Urogi here. Oh, Karaku! Bro. <laughs> this is so unfair, man! Sheesh! Nezuko, come on, come on! Oh my god, Aizetsu's back! Oh my god! Oh, bro! Oh, back with Gyoko and Muichiro, damn! Bro, this music! Muichiro's still in the water prison pot. He can't breathe and he can't cut out of the water. Damn, it's like a balloon! Bro, and those needles have poison. Muichiro looks like he's just chilling though. <laughs> Wow, that's so cool. The, the water prison. Oh, no, no, I don't call a water prison pot. It actually looks like a pot. That's pretty cool. I like that. Fake sto stoicism? I don't think it's fake. His creative juices? Wow. Artists. Damn. Is it too pinned her to a tree? Bro, this is so unfair. Whoa! What? Whoa, what? Tanjiro again! Oh! And his mark has changed too! With the Hinokami! Bro! He's faster than before! Those unbelievable reflexes, his ability to adapt his uh, adapt himself in combat. Amazing, his mark has changed again. And I love how the Hinokami flames are in the color of Nezuko's explosive blood. Like her flames. That is so cool. Tanjiro is a, he's a fighting genius! Damn! Urogi's wing! Damn! Ho! Oh! Damn! Nezuko! She's burning him alive! Oh my god, bro! He's already going for Karaku! Damn! Oh! The gravity of the wind! He slashed him? Come on, Genya. Get on Tengu. Come on, Genya. He's been searching this whole time? Use your demon senses, Genya. Senses? I can't even speak right. Bro, I don't even understand how he's keeping his sanity even as a demon, man. Like, shouldn't he be feeling like. You know, eating a, a human right now? I, I don't know. Genya's, I guess, mental strength is on a whole other level. You love to see it. 
Dude, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, what did he say? The longer this goes on, the closer I get to being depleted. So what, his demon form has a limit? Is that what he means? How does he become like this? Damn, right to the gut. Tanjiro's mark has changed back. Down below. He can shrink himself? Oh my God, what part of Ant-Man is this, bro? What? Hantengu can shrink himself? What? <laughs> Damn, ooh. Since he's a small target, the bullets are gonna be very dumb. <laughs> Look how he's running for ice for Hantengu. Did you get him? What? His blade broke. What? Whoa. And he's still that strong? Damn! Bro, he's on Tango Invincible? Sekido! No! He's going for his neck, I'm sure. What is going on here? No. He can't regenerate his head? Sanemi. Oh, his big brother. Some Genya backstory? So his big brother would acknowledge him, Sanami would? Damn. Yo. Yeah, this is what I need. I'm gonna need to know what the backstory is between Genya. Oh! That's how it used to look like during final selection. Wow. What? She used to overwork herself? Is that the... It was also a good for nothing. <laughs> Damn, he got stabbed to death? Damn! Oh, he was an abuser. Well, he deserved it. God damn, bro. Look at the size of his legs. God damn! Wow! Yo, he has a scar too. Just like, I, do scars like literally just run in their family or something? <laughs> Interesting. Aw. Uh, she would shield Sanami and Genya from their father. Damn. What a scumbag. I guess he got what he deserved by being stabbed like that. Wait, huh? Bro, how many were there in his family? I thought it was just him and Sanami. I guess there he had more siblings. Okay. Wow, there were many. Just like, I guess, Tanjiro and his family. Oh, that must be little Genya. Little Sanami. Aw. Genya, are you not sleeping? I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go. Oh, he wants to protect him. Oh? What do they promise? Bro, please tell me. Okay, normally with these backstories, a demon is always involved. So please tell me. Is that is that where this is going? Like, did the mom get attacked by a demon or something? And, you know, towards the beginning, you see Sanami with like a butcher knife there. And Genya was holding the mom, I'm guessing. I think this is where this is going, but let's see how it goes. I guess he was the second born, and maybe Sanami is the first born. So, Sanami, Genya, uh, one. Wait, Sanami, Genya, one. That's three, four, five, six. So there's six of them, right? Sanami, Genya. Okay, little baby there. That's three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven of them. Right? Bro, I can't count. <laughs> but how many are here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, seven. Plus Sanami. Okay. Math. <laughs> and Sanami hasn't come back either. Did she get attacked by a demon or something? Is that her? Something is Oh! Oh! Oh my god! All of them got killed! Oh my! It's a demon! That's how he got his scar on his nose! Bro! Sanami! Oh my god! That demon packed up all of his siblings! And the little one! Is the little one okay? Bro. Oh my god. Meanwhile, Sanami's taking on that demon, bro. Damn! 
Sanami packed it up! Jesus Christ, Sanami's a savage! The demon was his mom! The demon was their mom! Oh my god! That is brutal! Muzan turned her into a demon? Genya held, held hatred for him because of doing that. He didn't understand at the time. He didn't understand the situation. Okay. It was your mom. She was a demon. Yes. Damn. Damn, that is so brutal. I'm sure Sanami was broken. Denounced you? I'm sure. Damn. Now, now I understand why Sanami held so much hatred towards uh, demons, you know? And why he treated Nezuko the way he did that first time when they met during the Hashira meeting. It all makes sense now. Damn, this is such a brutal backstory, man. Sheesh. Their mom turned into a demon. And Sanami had to kill her. That is so messed up. And now it's only Sanami and Genya who are left out of all of them. Genya. Oh. Wait, are the siblings still alive? Wait, they're still alive? Wait, so the mom didn't kill them? They were just like minorly injured? So they survived. So it's just not Genya and Sanami. I thought the mom killed all of them. Because I, I, Genya did say he was going to get the doctor. So I guess they survived. Sanami, bro. Nah, you're not dying, Genya. Bro. Nah, you're not dying, Genya. You're not dying. You're not dying. He's not dying. Somebody's gonna save him. He, he can't use breathing techniques and I'll never be... Now, no wonder his fighting style is, is so unorthodox like this. He uses a gun and everything, so he's just like Senjuro. Rengoku's brother, because he has no talent either and he couldn't become a swordsman. Interesting. Wow. But even so, he didn't let that stop him. He's out here fighting the upper rank four, man. Yo, Genya, mad respect, bro. Mad respect, bro. He can never meet the other Hashira? Oh. Damn! That's what he said to him the last time they met? He's not gonna die. Tanjiro! Save him! Let's go! Let's go, Tanjiro! Let's go! Oh! His neck! Don't give up! Let's go! Shout out to the season 2 Never Give Up episode, bro! You already know Tanjiro's on that Never Give Up vibe! Let's go! Let's go! Yes! Yes! Let's go! Aizetsu! Weeping Whoa! Squarely, he hit him! Did Genya jump in front of the attack? Oh my god! That pierced holes through him! Oh my god, Genya! Oh, Genya! Genya, oh, bro! He's gonna let him have it! Oh, Genya. Is he gonna heal? He was reaching his limit. Let's go. Bro, Genya. Oh, Genya is such a great character, man. I love him so much. Especially after that backstory.
So Tanjiro is going to head for Hantengu. Bro, he's so small. Look at him go. I swear, this is hilarious. This music is great. <laughs> I just can't help but laugh. Look at him. I swear, Hantengu. Come on. Get him, Tanjiro. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. ARE YOU KIDDING ME?! What is our Taisho secret, huh? What?! Whoa, 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 he hasn't been eating since then?! Bro, that was back in season 1, that's crazy, you can't battle demons unless you eat. So is he not eating because he can only eat human flesh? <laughs> wow. True. Oh. Awful villain? <laughs> Bro, I gotta love Tanjiro and Genya's banter. It is absolutely hilarious, man. Bro, these cliffhangers are so annoying. They keep ripping my soul apart each time, each week, bro. How do they always end it at one of the most epic moments every time, bro? Like, oh, it really hurts. Anyway, this episode was absolutely fantastic. I gotta say, out of all the Hashira that we've gotten introduced to, Tengen, um, you know, Rengoku, Giyu, you know, I mean, okay, there's some that we still don't know too much about just yet. But um, I gotta say, Sanami and Genya's backstory, especially Sanami, now I understand why he was, like I said, why he is the way he is now and so hateful towards demons, you know, because damn, yo, his mom got turned into a demon. I don't know, okay, because I don't know if it like was another upper rank demon that turned her into a demon or was Muzan specifically. The reason I say that is because Doma was the one responsible for turning uh, Gyutaro and Daki into demons, you know, and I thought that it was only Muzan who had that kind of power, you know, but... Um, after season two, you guys explained to me that that's not, not the case, you know? But damn, that was such a brutal backstory, man. Yo! And, and Sanami had no choice but to, to take her out, you know? And then he realized that he was his mom. That is so painful. That is so painful, man. Oh my gosh. But this was a solid episode. Those Hantengu scenes were absolutely hilarious, man. Yo! <laughs> I mean, <laughs> seeing a miniature version of him, how can you not laugh at that, bro? That is hilarious. But man... I have to say, Genya has gone up there in regards to being my one of my top favorite characters so far in this show, man. God damn. And now it makes sense why his fighting style is so unorthodox. I thought that maybe he had like stone breathing or something, you know, since uh, Giyome is his trainer, but that seems not to be the case at all. He had no talent, so he couldn't become a Hashira. So I guess he doesn't have a color changing uh, blade at all. So I'm guessing that maybe that blade he has was just a normal one, I suppose. You know, so like I was referencing, he's just similar to uh, Rengoku's brother Senjiro because he also had no talent and couldn't become a Hashira either or a Demon Slayer for that matter. But I gotta admire Genya for trying, you know, even having no talent in that regard. He still, you know, wants to become a Hashira and wants his brother Sanemi to acknowledge him. That is so... Oh, that is amazing, man. That is absolutely amazing. He could have given up hope at that moment when Sekido was coming in with a, uh, you know, with his staff to like stab him in the head right there. But Tanjiro came in and ga gave him that don't give up, you know, that 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 really amazing, amazing motivational, you know, cheering up for him not to give up and you love to see it man oh my the pep talk that's the word i was looking for anyway yeah man and that's why i was like you know shout out to the never give up episode one of the best episodes so uh you know ever we've gotten in demon slayer you know uh, back in season two but uh man this episode was fantastic you know absolutely fantastic and it seems like tanjiro is going in and out of the you know the the mark you know like it really that, that moment right there with uh with karaku he seemed to have gone in and out of it was it no was it with karaku or was it with Aizetsu? I'm gonna need to go back and rewatch that. But man, sheesh. What caught me way off guard is the fact that Hantengu is still around. Like, after he got his head cut, I didn't actually think that he would be around. I thought it was just like Sekido, Urogi, Aizetsu, and Karaku. I didn't think like Hantengu was still around, you know, but now it makes sense. Yo.
autonomy a lot, you know. Um, from that backstory, I now understand why he was the way he was, you know, in the interaction with Nezuko during the Hashira meeting and how he hates demons. But what he said to Genya was really sad, though. Like, I, I don't know if, like, he, because seeing him smile there in the flashback was really wholesome and all, but. I don't know, man. Like, did he... Is he, like... I don't know. Is it a situation of where he's trying to push Genya away to protect him and tell him that you're, uh, you know, you're not worthy to become a demon slayer, you're pathetic, you know, and all that kind of stuff? Is he projecting that sort of, you know, uh, those kind of feelings towards Genya to try and protect him? I can only assume that's what he's doing, you know, because he doesn't want Genya to get hurt. I mean, I can only assume he loves his brother. There's no way he's saying all those things, like, you know... I, I don't I don't buy it, Sonami. Anyway, we'll find out, I guess, eventually. But this was an absolutely solid episode. Can I wait to see how things play out in the next one looks like tanjiro is going after a hantengu and genya is going to deal with uh you know aizetsu um and everything and uh sekido was left there too um and i guess um nezuko is dealing with urogi and uh and uh karaku i suppose yeah i, be I believe yeah and then of course we have um uh, Muichiro and uh, Gyoko still, uh, you know, battling it out. I wonder how Muichiro is going to get out of that, uh, you know, uh, water prison pot and everything. We haven't even seen, we don't even know where baby, he's, uh, she was left with the chief after she saved the chief and everything, but uh, she's, she's going to come to the battle and help. We we really need her. Um, baby girl Mitsuri, that is. So, yeah, man. Anyway, guys, that's a solid episode. Cannot wait to see how things play out in the next one. If you did enjoy my reaction to this one, I'd really appreciate it if you guys could subscribe to the channel. It really does help out. We didn't still, we, we never still got the, the answer to why Genya is able to become a demon. Hopefully...